We're starting off today by getting our colorants ready for our soap. So I have half a teaspoon of indigo that I'm mixing with one teaspoon of sunflower oil. And I'm going to use that in varying strengths in my soap batter um, to get different shades of blue. This is paprika that I've been infusing in oil for almost a year. I do add a little bit more oil to that just to make it a little more fluid so I can mix it into my soap a little better. And here is a quarter teaspoon of turmeric that I'm mixing with one teaspoon of sunflower oil again. And this is going to be my yellow that I will have in my soap. Now for color and uh, for uh, scents today we have orange 15x essential oil from Whole Supply, Wholesale Supplies Plus. I like that one because it is clear and patchouli essential oil from New Directions Aromatics is the other scent that I am using today. Now it's time to start making my soap, uh, adding the colorants to the soap batter. This is my charcoal that I had mixed in oil and I'm using just a little bit of charcoal into the soap batter so I just mix that and set it aside and this is my indigo. Uh, a little does go a very long way and the batter, it always looks slightly more gray than blue but once it's in the soap and once it's gelled and cut it really has a really pretty kind of turquoise sheen to it. I'm just going to go ahead and add about one teaspoon of the paprika powder infused in oil for my orange. Again, uh, the gelling really helps make that uh, orange a lot brighter. And then for the turmeric, um, it looks peach colored in the wet soap batter, but again, once it's gelled, that one ends up turning yellow. Um, that's just one of the things I've noticed when using turmeric. You can get all sorts of different shades from it depending on the temperature that you soap at. Now this is my mold that I'm using from Nurture Soap and I have my dividers in there. And I'm going to start off by pouring my white soap into the middle. Now I had used a lot of white oils as my base to try to help make my soap better as white as possible so that like the yellow tinge soap batter wouldn't change my indigo to greenish because I find that um, the, the blue with the yellow does tend to make a green. So um, one of the secrets that I use to getting a white batter and to having a very fluid batter is to use lard. Whenever I need to do intricate swirls with soap, I always make sure to use lard um, and because it, it just stays at such a thin trace for so long it really takes a long time to, for for it to harden up and I find when I use lard I need to use like a, um, a silicone mold versus like my molds that I line with freezer paper because it does tend to leak so anyway as I'm pouring in my soap batter I'm just keeping like the orange uh, and the yellow on one side the white and the black I'm just kind of um, pouring down the middle in the center and for the blue I do varying shades of the indigo uh, powder so ju I just pour you know as I'm feeling like I want to pour and just trying to keep the, the colors separate um, between the blue and the orange basically and then we'll do a hang or swirl in just a moment
Now I have this really nice hanger tool that I also got from Nurture Soap and it fits this specific mold perfectly and I really like the options. So I'm sticking the, it down to the bottom of the mold on one end and I'm just going like back and forth slowly rising it up just a little bit each time uh, until I get to the top. Now it took two days for me to be able to unmold my soap. I actually ended up gelling it twice because um, it was just too soft and I knew I just needed to gel it one more time 
to just firm it up even more so that I could unmold it without you know the edges coming off because that was what was happening uh, 24 hours after I made the soap I ended up gelling it the second day and then I'm cutting it on the third day so it is possible to gel your soap more than once And now I'm just cleaning up around the edges. Uh, the, some of the edges were slightly rough where um, it had been moist and when I tried to unmold it, it just had left rough edges. So I'm just trying to fix that up a little bit and clean it up. And then I'm going to bevel it in a minute, you'll see, using a beveler from Wild Plantanica. 